If health is wealth, then the sunnah is a treasure trove you want to bank on. Joining us today is the diet doctor himself, Moody Danawi. Someone who's been on the cover of Men's Health magazine and someone who's a regular on TV morning shows and major radio stations across Australia. He's accompanied the Australian Olympic team to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil for the Olympic Games and he's someone who's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and an undercover maths whiz. He's currently just finished a book on the gems and wisdoms of the Sunnah when it comes to preserving our health and our bodies. What would be the prophetic approach towards addressing the problem of obesity today? It would be basically mimicking the life of the Prophet ﷺ mm -hmm. and his relationship with food. He saw food for function. It's a source of sustenance to allow him ﷺ, to be able to perform your ibadah with vigor. And that's what food was. It's for function and sometimes for fun and you can enjoy mm -hmm. the things that you enjoy. The Prophet ﷺ enjoyed some foods. Whatever he didn't like, he stayed away from, mm -hmm. but he did not criticize. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what we have to do. We have to eat according to biological availability. Like the Prophet ﷺ did not combine certain foods together. He did not eat while he was standing. He was in a sitting position. He ate on the sofa, on the floor. He sallallahu used his hands. So you've mentioned obviously not overeating would be a prophetic approach towards addressing obesity. Eating according to the Prophet sallallahu teachings, one third, one third, one third, they are not random fractions. If you have too much food, not enough water, you're going to feel constipated and bloated. If you have too much water, not enough food, the water will wash away and flush away the nutrients, not giving them a chance to be absorbed by your stomach and go into your bloodstream to become building blocks. If you have too much food and water, then you can't breathe correctly. Just like an athlete, if they overeat, eat, they can't perform from a cardiovascular perspective and you experience what's called a stitch. Everyone's had one but not many of us know what it is. It's simply the stomach having too much food and water in there mm -hmm. and it bumps into other organs and it is quite painful. Then there's the hakma behind not combining foods that don't work together. The Prophet ﷺ told us not to combine seafoods with dairy. So they don't go well together and you can even suffer from food poisoning if you combine the two. But if you eat foods that are diff too different in texture, the Prophet ﷺ combined the date, the dry date with the cucumber for the moisture mm -hmm. to help with the digestion. And if we eat according to those teachings, it is fine easier for the food to digest. So if you combine foods that are too rough in texture, then it takes too much stress on behalf of the stomach and it's quite taxing onto the kidneys and the rest of the organs. Eat sitting down, be conscious, be in a state of appreciation and gratitude. Research shows that if you are conscious while you are eating, you're in a state of shukr while you are eating and you're conscious of the blessing in front of you, then your brain releases the, the peptides into the stomach and the acids in the stomach start to be produced according to that food much more efficiently. It takes about seven seconds. Mm -hmm. So if I have a mouthful, hypothetically speaking, of some green beans, steak, and some sweet potato. The brain is going through this really abstract algorithm of breaking down what you've consumed and the portion size. So there are acids and enzymes in the stomach that are relevant to every food type, and it will be released relevant to the quantity that you've consumed per mouthful. If we were to do the calculation for every mouthful, we'd be very busy people. Now, the brain says to the stomach, release A, B, C, and enzymes in this quantity for this mouthful, very specific. And it takes seven seconds, and it's a calculation that's being calculated while the food is traveling at various speeds, varying from four meters per second, slowing down to two meters per second, speeding up to three meters per second, over a span of seven seconds. It's exactly the amount of time that is needed for the stomach to communicate with the brain, subhanAllah. And now we know the stomach is called the first brain because we've got the same neurons in the brain, in the stomach. stomach. And that is how, if we stand up, the brain has not had an opportunity to communicate with the stomach efficiently. And the food lands there before the communication mm -hmm. takes place and it wreaks havoc. There's many, many hakim from the Prophet وسلم, not drinking with your food, because then if you're diluting the enzymes with the liquid, Liquid, the food can't be broken down efficiently into building blocks. And the beverages we drink today out of the fridge are four degrees Celsius. The temperature of the human body is an average of 37 degrees and food becomes liquid. If you subject something that's 37 degrees to a liquid that's four degrees, you're essentially solidifying the liquid. So the lipids, the fat molecules inside the blood at the time from the food, if they're liquid and then they're subjected to four degrees and they become solid, that's how strokes and blockage in the arteries happen. Oh. And that's, it's a dangerous thing. Well, wow, so many wisdoms just in the manner of eating of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we can derive benefit from. What are some of the findings you can share with us when it comes to fasting? Intermittent fasting was initially created by a doctor, Jason Fong. He mm -hmm. wrote a book called The Caveman Diet. Mm -hmm. And then shortly thereafter, Dr. Michael Mosley wrote the book on intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. And without knowing that these are prophetic teachings, yes. the recommendation was to fast one month a year, a couple of days every month, and preferably on a Monday and Thursday, which mm -hmm. is Allah's that controls the time. So and this is uh, found in the works of Michael Mosley? That's correct, yeah. And the recommendation was to enjoy your Saturday, Sunday, as people like to do, and not fast. Then you're ready for a fast on Monday. Then 
after fasting Monday, take a couple of days off, i.e. Mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, and then start fasting again on Thursday. Yeah. So subhanAllah, he was preaching the sunnah without even knowing. If you look at longitudinal research, which means research that is on large databases, on a large group of people, 10,000 plus, and it's done for a long period of time, 10 years plus, so that it's solid, conclusive research, it is the only known way to rid your body of the carcinogens. So to prevent cancer, essentially, or to fight cancer through a process called autophagy. Because after 18 hours of fasting, the body uses toxic cells even as a fuel source. We all have toxic cells, mm -hmm. and that's what becomes cancer. And to rid our body of these cancerous cells, the best way to do that is fasting. What about when it comes to certain behaviors that don't necessarily pertain to food? For instance, like using the miswak, behaviors of the Prophet ﷺ and how they promote good health. Well, if you look at dental research, mm -hmm. it's quite a modern phenomenon. And the earliest known literature on dental health and gum health is the hadith on the Prophet ﷺ yeah, using the miswak. Sure. It was the initiator of research into oral hygiene because we know now conclusively that bad dental health and bad gum health leads to gum diseases that not only cause damage locally, but also are related to all the gastrointestinal diseases, physiological diseases, cognitive diseases, mm -hmm. even fertility. So bad health. gum health can also lead to infertility. The Prophet ﷺ said, I am not the first to use the miswak. All the Prophets ﷺ jamian, use the miswak. And the miracle there is that every region of the body has a different type of bacteria. The bacteria on your hands is different to the bacteria in your nose and it's different to the bacteria in your ears. And every bacteria has a certain antibacterial defense mechanism and properties that combat that bacteria. And the miswak has the antibacterial properties or the bacteria of the mouth specifically. A toothbrush can eat away at the enamel, whereas the miswak is just the right dexterity and texture to clean the teeth without causing any damage to the enamel. I think we can literally choose different aspects of the sunnah and start to unpack them and drawing parallels with modern science and really seeing the value of the sunnah. I wanted to speak about dates, the health benefits of the date, why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized the date. If you want to see the glory of the creator, you look mm -hmm. at the creation and the date is a remarkable, very small piece of uh, food, very mm -hmm. small morsel of food that has an array of benefits. It mm -hmm. has all the vitamins and minerals and antioxidants mm -hmm. and phytonutrients and the hakmeh behind breaking our fast with the date mm -hmm. is that so we can hydrate. Because once the person reaches a state of dehydration and sometimes they would go without food for extended periods mm -hmm. of time or without water, then you would need to hydrate. Now we know that if we are reaching a state of dehydration, it takes 14 hours to rehydrate if you use water alone. That's why we have medical grade electrolytes like mm -hmm. hydrolyte and pedialyte and coconut water. Mm -hmm. Now, if we break our fast just with the water, we would become more and more dehydrated as the month of Ramadan passes. However, the existence of the day is the electrolytes. Mm -hmm. So that's what allows the water to be saturated into the body, into every vein and artery in your body. I don't think anything is coincidence that the Prophet said, mm -hmm. it's all way. Now, when we break our fast, what do we say? We say, it is describing the exact process that the body endures from a physiological standpoint when you consume the dates and the water and even the diabetic can have the date without having the insulin spike because the fiber of the date negates the carbohydrate and insulin spike from the date so that the repercussions are not there just mm -hmm. like honey i've worked closely with some of the diabetes departments in hospitals and they will say moody why do you allow them honey if you look at the label five grams of honey is technically five grams mm -hmm. of sugar however it doesn't cause an insulin spike why because of the antibacterial properties and all the goodness that comes in honey it's not processed and it is the only food on planet earth that does not expire we need to speak about meat i guess meat has become an addiction in our communities at least They're it's very hard to have a meal without yeah. meat like it's not considered an entire meal the meal is incomplete without having a the portion protein of meat. yeah it's the star of every dish mm -hmm. i know i've got friends that won't eat their wife's cooking or people won't eat their mum's cooking because there's no meat and they don't count it as a meal which is terribly wrong the prophet وسلم, he didn't forbid meat but he didn't eat meat often and now we know that red meat in particular if it is processed and it is not grass-fed not may cause cancer but will conclusively without a shadow of a doubt cause cancer so over it's time a it's a grade one it's a category one carcinogen mm -hmm. and the prophet وسلم, another one of his many many miracles mm -hmm. is that he differentiated between the unarmed the cattle of mecca and the cattle from medina so the advice about eating meat once a week but twice a week if you came from an affluent background and you had a little bit more money and you were accustomed to eating meat more than once mm -hmm. then you were allowed to eat it twice a week and the study that i looked at in the last five years was astonishing this study showed that if you consume more than 70 grams of meat per day over a course of seven days that indefinitely it becomes carcinogenic now, who eats 70 grams of meat in one day? Nobody. 70 grams is two mouthfuls, three mouthfuls, and mm -hmm. probably one when no one's looking. Mm -hmm. Quite small size. However, chemicals have something called a half-life. So they're in your blood for a certain period of time. And this chemical has a half-life of seven days. Now, 70 times seven is 490 grams. We're Muslims, so let's be generous, round it up to 500. Mm -hmm. 500 grams of steak or 500 grams of meat is two portions at the local restaurant that mm -hmm. serves steak. It's mm -hmm. two 250 gram portions. Look at the rationale behind this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 1445 years ago, advised us to eat non grass fed meat not more than twice a week Amr radiallahu anhu made it law during his khalifa and we are told now so many years later
later that this is what's killing us. Anything more than that portion? Anything more than that. The point is the duration of the chemical half-life is seven days. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet Sallallahu specifically set a time frame of seven days. That's another miracle within the miracle. Human beings need this guidance from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a guide. Mm -hmm. And Surah Al-Alaq Allah Subhanahu Wa says, Inna al-insana layatla ar-ra'a The human being surely goes to excess when he deems himself wealthy, not the opposite. A lion will catch its prey and it will sit and eat that prey. It won't go and hunt the next one while the food is on the table. Whereas we'll be eating something and looking at what's next. The fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he came with his way, this was wahi. He was receiving That's revelation right. it wasn't from Allah on a Subhanahu Wa yeah. Ta'ala. Yeah. Allah is the one who created not know what is best for the servants and he is the subtle, the all aware. He was getting his information from the creator of the human body. So That's right. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was bringing things which are profound in their knowledge.